Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix and today we're going to be looking at how to run interactive facilities in batch of course on the mainframe. Now running uh, interactive facilities or programs in batch is of course not a new idea. I, I really suspect that it's something that IBM introduced with uh, with MVT and TSO already back in I want to say maybe around 72, 1972, 1973 but you can also see it in every modern Linux and every modern Unix. Um, so the idea has always been there because the some utilities are written to be run uh, in, in interactive mode on the terminal, but then either because they take too long or because uh, they, you want to script them, it makes sometimes sense to run them as batch uh, in the background. So for instance, uh, I have here a Linux uh, Windows here, I'm connected to my, uh, one of my Linux uh, servers. And let's say that I'm on the root file system and I want to do a find name Moshix in the whole uh, in the whole file system. Now that's going to take a while, right? And so I can la launch it and now it's just running there. So if I don't want to wait for it to finish, um, well, uh, if I don't want to wait for this command to finish, what I can do is uh, of course, I can run it with the ampersand command, and then it's going to be run. It gets a, a a process ID, and then you could run it. You could run the jobs command, and it would uh, it would it would show you all the running jobs in the background. Uh, why is this now being? This computer is just too fast. Um, we could just do. Um, Yeah, so let's. This is going to take a little bit longer. So let's do like this now, uh, and we want to write the output into root output. Okay, so if I want to run, I can start it now. And of course, as you can see, it will occupy my terminal for a very long time. And when you think Linux and Unix, always think back into the teletypewriter times when you actually had paper printing out whatever was what we see now on the screen. So that wouldn't be acceptable, right? So you would probably route it to an out to an output file. And I don't want to wait for the output, so I would just put an ampersand, and now it's running. And I, if I do jobs, I will see that, it, that it's running as a job. The other way to do it is I can start it like that, and then I say Control Z. If you press Control Z, as you can see here, it stops it, and then you just say background, and now I will see it uh, with the job. So BG means go into the background. If I say FG, it puts it back in, again into the foreground. So that's the basic idea. Um, a lot of people will know this, of course, from Unix. And, but I think, I suspect, I don't know for sure, that uh, probably TSO and uh, uh, the, four, the, four, uh, the, the grandfather, the granddaddy of ZOS, which would be MVS, and its uh, predecessor, MVT, when they introduced TSO, they also made it, I think from the beginning, made TSO, which is the environment we see here on this terminal, uh, executable from the batch job. And, and so you could run a batch job and give TSO commands and, uh, and, and get the same results as if you were typing them on the screen, which is very useful, again, when you want, when you want to script things or when you want to run very long, um, execute very long running jobs. So today we're going to look at how to do this for an, a bunch of facilities. So as you know, one of the things that's in uh, in MV, in ZOS is a Unix file, um, system. There's a whole Unix system in there. And a lot of people don't know that, but uh, I think that, in fact, uh, maybe a substantial future of ZOS and the mainframe is in the uh, MV, IBM uh, Unix system services, USS. You can invoke it if you're in the, t you can either just TSO, uh, S sorry, SSH into it or Telnet into it. But if you don't want to do that, you can also run it from any, um, any TSO connected terminal, right? And you can just give it commands. And as you can see here, I have, uh, um, I have here a file, which I, which is an assembler and then assembled it uh all we can of course we have a c compiler uh, i should be able to do this yes there is a c compiler of course installed and many other things so um now all these utilities that's in there like ls or uh print working directory or who is logged in so this is that right now there's only a guy called moshik's logged in it's may 29 
So all these things, all the commands that are inside USS or the Unix for ZOS can also be run from batch. How do we do that? So I have here a little uh, example that I wrote. I have to experiment with it, so I, I'm, I'm going to do it in real time because I, I wasn't even sure how how it would work and if it would work at all, but it does. So and that's the kind of the mentality I like of ZOS. Everything that you can do on the screen, you can also do in a batch job. And and I really mean everything, including C-list panels. These panels can be done in batch. Um, of course, Rex can be run in batch and many other things. And I'll show two of those today, which is the Unix system services and the other one is the SDSF, the spool viewer, which we all know and love, probably the best part of ISPF. Uh, when you work on the on TSO is this part here right where you can see what's on the system and it's interactive you can see your output you can see um, uh, you can see everything that's uh, in just two related uh, executing on the on the mainframe oops so deleting some old output if you bear with me okay let's go do this now let's start oops went too far uh, mainframe is a little bit slow today. I don't know why. Probably too many users. Alrighty, so we go in here, and I have here a very simple job called uh, BPX patch. Now, a batch, and what this is is it's a it's a it's a background batch job that will actually execute uh, a program called B. BPX batch. BPX means an address space for Unix system services. So anytime you run a program inside USS, you're actually uh, starting kind of an initiator for any commands uh, that run inside USS because part of the Unix uh, requirements is that every command has its own address space. And so since creating address space um, is a very expensive proposition, just like we do on the batch system where we have initiators running, right? You know that we have initiators and then we attach to those initiators. They're already ready-made, so we don't have to incur the whole expense of creating an address space. The same thing also ex uh, exists with USS and there is pre-existing address spaces waiting for any USS or Unix commands to attach to it. And I'll, what I'm doing here in this case, I'm just executing a whole bunch of them here, right? One would be enough, I could just do this. Uh, and just execute one command. Uh, but then I just want to show that there's an expense in running those, and that's why I have a bunch of those. But we're, bear with me, what we do here is we have a job card, very normal, and then we say execute um, a USS, a Unix system services for COS batch job, and the parameter is uh, shell. You always have to provide a shell because it needs an environment, of course, to run in. And then we just say echo, uh, let's just do Y1 or just say YouTube uh, and write this to the console. And this def, this device here, slash def, slash console, is the MVS console, is the ZOS console. So, um, so let's do reset and and then I just run a bunch, a bunch of those. We can just delete them. Yeah, let's delete it. it. Makes everything a little bit easier to understand. Okay, so now there's only one such thing being executed. So let's just run it, and I'll put, I'll put by the way, um, a copy of this batch, simp very simple batch job, in the description below this video, as well as my GitHub um, uh, repository with all my ZOS, MVS, and ZVM scripts and jobs and commands, etc. So I'll put the description and the link below this video that you're watching right now. So let's execute this with submit. <coughs> Excuse me. Job 2179. Let's keep this in mind. And it ended with a maximum condition code of zero, which is what we love. So let's start the second session here. Let's go to the spool viewer, SDSF. And bear in mind that we can run SDSF itself also in batch, which we will do just in a second. Let's go to the held output. And here is our held output. So you can see it started and um, it wrote, where is YouTube? Oh, here it is. So it wrote YouTube to the console <coughs> for user Moshix. So he knows the user obviously, so, so that the operator on the ZOS console just got this message. We could say, hello, how are you? 
come have a coffee, something like that, right? Obviously, in production, you don't want to you don't want to write too much uh, stuff on the console because it gets recorded for all eternity, and people don't like when you spam the console too much. But uh, it just shows that it's possible. So again, this very simple thing. So now we could just do it five times, right? And I can do two, three, four, five, six. So we can keep them apart. And you will see now that if I start uh, seven of these, each one, of course, is a step in this batch job. And each one has to start again in a trace space. You'll see there's quite an expense because it's actually, it's not that fast. Submit. And so now we're waiting. Uh, so it's still executing. And now it's finished. So let's go see. This one, and so you hear YouTube two, three, four, five, six. So, but you can see the whole thing took a little bit longer. Uh, it uh, this started at um, yeah, it took um, let's see where we see, yeah, so each one of those actually took um, where is the time six tenth of a second. Um, so uh, yeah, th those are those are expensive uh, executions. Those expensive um, jobs to run. So you, you you know ideally you would what you could do here of course is go create a script inside a directory and then execute the script seven times instead of doing it from here. So this would be much faster. So what do I mean by that? I could go here and say you. Oops, sorry. Marshix. Um, job one shell okay and then here i could just say echo youtube one um stuff console echo youtube two you see because this now is all running inside the same address space so it's going to be much much faster and so uh, as you can see here this is stored on the unix file system this is unix notation and you can also go have a look at it um, if you want to. There is a, a utility in ZOS called ISH. Takes a little while to get started. Yellow, here it is. So now we can see here, and here it is. So you can see this file, job one. and. We can also see it from here, right? So we could just now go to our little batch job. Um, and run it from there. Let's go back. So to show you what I mean is you moshix job one dot shell we could just execute it like that and now instead of running several steps we just run one step but inside there's a, a shell script which will then produce the same output so uh, same thing but probably uh seven eight hundred percent faster so you can get an idea here and also a little bit it also shows you how you have to think because you know each one is a step uh, in a job and so each time you're going from from a uh, ZOS environment into the USS environment and uh, and start a whole address space there. So those are expensive, um, expensive uh, 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 things to run, uh, operating system tasks to run. And so you always want to uh, optimize if you can and, and think smart and write it in an elegant way. So this is for the part where we actually execute Unix system services uh, tasks from within ZOS in the batch environment, right? So we did that. Now let's go look at how to run SDSF, okay? So we can also run SDSF from within batch. So this could be now on, on punch cards, it could be on tape, it could be read in and auto, uh, automatically executed without going through TSO at all. So real um, real batch. And how do, we, how do we do that? So we call it, uh, if this is the SF stop step name, this is of course the job card, as you know it. 
right? So far, so good. And then we just run the command SDSF. It can be run in batch. It's just a program like every other. And then we give it a parameter for the sizing of the window. We tell it to go to the same message class as we have here, which is a held output. And then this is the input to the command. So first we've set the prefix to everybody. So we don't have any prefix set. <coughs> prefix, uh, sorry. So the prefix is not set to anything special and the owner could be anything as long as we have permission. And then we want to see all the jobs and also all the output, uh, all the jobs in the output waiting to be printed. So why don't we run this and see what comes out. Uh, let's do it with A, so keep it apart. Let's run this. Job 2182, maximum condition code zero. So let's go look at the held output and of course we have to invoking an SDSF so <laughs> this is the same command we will be running so let's go there and we can see here see this is the output from here it is from SDSF okay as if we were sitting at the terminal which is very good so you could now pipe this into a rec script that extracts data uh, you could, there's also commands to hide most of the columns etc but uh, this would be a perfectly good way to produce output that you want about the system and, and store it into, you could, of course, you know, and right here the output goes into the held output, but I could just also say, um, you know, DSN output uh, uh, sequential, and then, you know, uh, the, um, give it to the disposition, and I could say new catalog, whatever. So it doesn't have to be on a, you know, it doesn't have to go to pro, to the spool. It could also just go to a normal file. Um, and of course, the input could also come from a file. So this could be all completely uh, be uh, instrumented from the outside. And just shows you some of the things that are possible to do. Another thing which we can also run in batch is TSO itself. So TSO can be run again as a as a as a as a batch or even C panels. Um, there's a bunch of things we can run that are that are predisposed to be run also as batch jobs. And all we wanted to do here today is to uh, is to show how you would do something like that. And again, I will copy the source for this uh, in the description below the video so you can play with it if you have access to a ZOS system. Um, and, um, but it would run very, very similar, of course, also on MVS. Um, the only thing is that on MVS 3.8, as delivered by TK4, we don't have SDSF, uh, but we do have Q, which is a program to show um, the, the spool, and that also can be executed in batch. So this is it. If you have any comments, any questions on how to run stuff in batch, or you want to show us some of the stuff that you do in batch, some of the cool tricks, uh, please post them in the comments below this video, and maybe I'll pick them up for the next video and show some of the cool stuff that you guys do. Uh, we're also nearing 2,000 subscribers, and I plan to have a, uh, a quiz again with uh, giveaway prices for the winners, and I'm thinking of something. Um, that uh, I hope to be able to accomplish within the next two, three weeks when we reach 2,000 viewers, uh, subscribers on this channel. If you haven't subscribed, then I would urge you to subscribe now. I always appreciate all thumbs up um, uh, when you press the thumbs up to appreciate the, co the content of my videos. <coughs> Sorry, this always encourages me and uh, makes me happy. So I always like those and I particularly like the comments. Thank you very much for watching and have fun. Bye-bye.